Otome visual novels typically hit on a few very recognizable beats. You have your Japanese setting, the innocent heroine, and a group of hot boys coming to shake up the scenario. Sadly, the opera house developed Spiral Memoria takes this general description and creates an entire game about it. Spiral Memoria hits the beats of a standard Otome, but never does anything more than expected, while stumbling in other elements in the process. Spiral Memoria is inherently about memory. Our main heroine Miku is an amnesiac girl who's tasked with finding her memories and figuring out her situation through the narrative, which also leads to the four romance routes. The game's amnesiac story and the circumstances surrounding the main character are interesting, but I just couldn't get over how generic this setup is. The genericness doesn't stop at the amnesiac lead, as character interactions and various plot points seem to be pulled from the basic foundation of the genre. The more significant issue is that there's a good story here somewhere, but the lack of character growth makes it incredibly hard to get invested in personally. There are three primary flaws that hurt Spiral Memoria the most. Primarily is the main character, Miku. As she's effectively a self-insert, it's frustrating because this makes her incredibly bland. The problem with an amnesiac lead is that she's a blank slate and without a personality. Through poor execution, this ends up making the chemistry feel forced for the sake of romance. The second flaw is that all the routes are basically about the same scenario hitting the same beats. So it's just from different perspectives. The same events happen regardless of what route you play. This means once you've played through one of the routes, you're retreading the same story beats in the rest. Effectively, this makes every route feel like a common route, and it makes it tough to get through additional playthroughs. Lastly, it's the game's length and depth. Spiral Memoria is incredibly short, and as a result, it can never adequately build up. There are no real relationships. The characters never go beyond the archetypes that they are cast, simply because there's no time to develop them. This can be seen as a positive as the game doesn't overstay its welcome, but come on, we're trying to engage with a romantic story here. When it comes to specific routes, the game boils down to a choice you make at the very beginning of the game, meaning you're predestined for the character, breaking the structure of the typical Otome game. This choice undermines an interesting plot point that happens in about the middle of the game, but because the game doesn't really do much with it, the twist is effectively just set dressing that gets very old by your second playthrough. As for the main boys, the first guy, Sosuke Okochi, is entirely forgettable. There's so little substance in the first route that they're like, hey, remember the two elements that just happened when they were like 15 minutes ago at the most? The second route with Hayato Minakata is better as he has more of a personality and the route includes themes of family instead of just a straight relationship. It's not that special, but with this game, you take what you can get. One would expect the Dr. Kazuma Yukawa's route to be a little bit more interesting in regards to the content, but the elements of the story once again not fleshed out. My biggest gripe with this route is that it starts slow, which makes it tough to believe in the relationship, as the main girl just doesn't really engage. Still, the guy is likable and is appealing as the route plays with the older gentleman dynamic. The last route with Rin Okazaki is honestly the only route that had actual chemistry, and the only time in which the story isn't entirely focused on the heroine Miku. They actually take time to develop the romance, and Miku gets the chance to help someone else instead of just receiving help and being a damsel in distress. So out of the four routes, this is my favorite, but that's not really saying much. How one's enjoyment of this game is determined by the amount of which one goes to Otome's for wish fulfillment. If you play Otome's for a story, you'll probably be disappointed. Still, if you play to engage with a romantic experience, these might be enough. When it comes to presentation, Spiral Memoria has pretty good character illustrations and the CGs really sell the romance. Sadly, the backgrounds don't share the same quality as their weird low-res watercolory messes. It's incredibly jarring, it doesn't do the game any appeal. The music is generic and bad, and there's like one track I can think of that stood out. Ah, so Spiral Memoria manages to be a competent Otome game, doing everything that is expected from the genre, but in the process fails to make a distinctive experience, leaving the game entirely forgettable. The story is generic, the structure is inherently flawed, and the presentation is just average. If you're looking to have pretty boys romance you, and you're okay with just that, this game might be enough, but the premise seems to be pulled out of a standard list of what makes an Otome game.
Noisy Pixel gives Spiral Memoria a 5.5 out of 10. This has been Noisy Pixel, signing off. Please check out the written review on the website, and if interested in content like this, please subscribe to the channel to be notified about our future content, and have a great day. Yes,